Hello everyone, this is lecture 34, Databases. Um, hope everyone is healthy and staying safe. I have to start out by apologizing. Uh, you may notice this video did not come out on Wednesday as I had planned. I messed up and I'm actually re-recording it now on Thursday. So in case you're curious, what I did, I use Open Broadcaster Studio for my recording and I record the lectures in about 15 clips of just short segments. And then I use um, Shotcut to merge them all together. And what I did was took all the videos that are downloaded to the videos directory and then I moved them to where I keep them permanently uh, while I was rendering the video. And because that hadn't finished yet when I moved the files, uh, it gave me a video that had some content and then black space, just black for the rest of the video, nothing. Um, when I was all done, I've got the mp4 file and deleted all the rest of the clips. I didn't need them anymore and didn't realize that my video was just black. I've been having huge internet connection problems. So this morning, I drove over to my other workplace. I don't know if you guys know this, but I have a full-time job as a programmer, and I pretty much just do the teaching thing for fun. I really enjoy it. Uh, it's uh, 16 hours a week for me. Actually, I probably spend about 16 hours a week just answering email, so it's a little more than that. But I uploaded it to YouTube and then previewed what was there, and found my mistake. So I'm back home, I'm re-recording this, and hopefully I will get this up. I'm gonna get it up ASAP, as soon as I finish re-recording. Okay, I wanna start off with a couple of other business items. Uh, first, some announcements. Uh, let's see here, PA was due almost two weeks ago. Uh, I'm still getting questions on this. If you guys are still struggling with P8, if you haven't figured out that material yet, it's definitely time to get help. First, we've got uh, tutors, uh, TAs available, and uh, online. Uh, we're using Blackboard Collaborate. Definitely go check that out. Shelf hours, um, lab hours, they're, they're manning all of those things. Um, feel free to write to me or Mina um, and definitely go back review the lecture material that was associated with P8. The slides are all available online and we have video lectures since spring break. Okay, P9 is actually due on Friday. Uh, I'm recording on Thursday. That would be tomorrow. Um, Good luck with that. If you have questions, we've got lab hours all day today and tomorrow. Uh, P10 has been released officially due the last day of class. It's the last day we can accept it. Um, Friday, May 1st, and late days may not be used on this project. It's on the syllabus. You guys have been told that all semester long. We need to turn in our grades and do the grading in a timely manner so that we can actually give you guys feedback and fix any mistakes. I would absolutely hate to give someone a zero because some little thing went wrong like uh, not using os.path to join the directory and the name together. Make sure you didn't hard code that. Um, all right, as for the final project, uh, details will be coming very soon. We ran into a little issue. So when the campus switched to completely online, the detail us do whatever it takes to get your job done. And now they're coming, you know, so we decided to do a final project instead of a final exam. And we canceled exam two. Um, now they're coming back with, whoa, 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 hey, there's rules about final exams. And uh, I'm going to figure out what happens, and then we'll be getting back to you guys with more information. Okay, as far as um, grading goes, uh, resubmission deadline extensions, we've been getting a lot of requests. And to be honest, it's to the point where we're probably letting things slip through the cracks and missing things. So Mina has put up a Google form. Um, you were emailed a link to that. Should you have any issues with grading, resubmission, or deadline extension, uh, go fill out that form, let us know, and then we will make sure that you don't slip through the cracks. It'll all be in one place for us. All right, course evaluations would be available on Friday normally. I believe that's still true. Um, with that in mind, my Wednesday lecture is the day that I would bring candy to class and announce very boldly that this is not a bribe. So at this point right now, pause the video, go get some candy, tell yourself it's not a bribe, you had to buy it yourself, and you're not going to use that to influence your opinion about my evaluation. Uh, with that in mind, um, my contract is semester by semester. And for Mina, it's her first semester as a faculty associate. So they are actually going to read our evaluations. A lot of the tenured faculty, I'm not sure. They give them a lot of weight. I think the faculty actually value them very highly and use them to improve their class. I certainly do. In fact, uh, I've always been reviewing our feedback from the website. And just a couple of comments from the YouTube comments and the feedback form on our website. Someone pointed out that I'm working at 2 a.m. to post videos. Yes, that's true. 
Uh, this whole video production, teaching online, takes a lot more time, and it's not really fitting into my life very well, so I'm staying up late. Uh, the quality of the videos was reported to be good. That's very exciting to me. I'm glad you guys can hear it. Uh, no one commented on using the microphone from Rock Band compared to the uh, Blue Snowball. Uh, so I'm glad to hear that it wasn't a disaster. Uh, someone commented that the videos are too long. Please make them shorter. Uh, I think my longest video was 61 minutes. Um, I'm not actually going to change that. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get the video done in the quality that I feel is appropriate. And if it takes me 10 extra minutes because I want to do one more demo or explain something clearly, I'm going to do that. Um, another person reported that the video lectures are not enough. And I got to admit, going to an online learning method uh, is hard. And, you know, normally you would have this uh, experience in class. There would be a schedule. Um, and you're basically forced to learn things on your own at this point. All right, another comment was make sure the lectures are available at 11 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, my lecture isn't actually scheduled until 4.35 on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I've been trying to record so that my recording is finished by 5.25 when the lecture ends. And then there's some um, editing, some processing, rendering, upload to YouTube. Um, so uh, that hasn't been... I don't think I've made that deadline yet, to be honest. Uh, Alright, and as far as YouTube comments go, very brief, there's not a lot there. Uh, but I did notice we have 445 people taking the class, and my average number of views is 364. So doing a little math there, it's a data programming class. We're going to look at some data. That means on average, 81 people haven't actually watched the videos. So uh, I don't know what's going on there. We are posting all of the lecture slides. But to be honest, I do a lot of online um, just live coding demos in Jupyter Notebook. So just viewing the slides probably isn't enough. All right, and at this point, since I'm talking about YouTube, if you guys are enjoying this content, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe, click the bell for uh, notifications, and um, Mina and I are working hard to bring you brand new content three times a week. All right, I'm just kidding, having a little fun. Um, all right, a couple other notes. If I have not replied to an email, at this point, it slipped through the cracks. Please send me another email. Um, I'm, I'm suspicious that I missed at least one. Okay, and then some study tips for taking courses online. All right, this semester has been absolutely the most crazy semester I've ever seen. I've been teaching for 11 years, and this is just wild. Uh, all new stuff for every single one of us. Basically, we're asking you guys to teach yourself without the structure of a regularly scheduled course. Um, and we're trying to... So, some of my advice here, how to deal with this, is to keep a schedule. Spend some time every single day studying. Now, I'm a firm believer in the power of cramming at the last second for an exam, but it's just not as efficient. And you don't retain that information as well as if you use it every day. In fact, I would say the most important thing about learning, how you learn, is to have the information in your mind and manipulate it. Use it. The longer it stays in your brain, the better you'll remember it. Okay. Um, let's see here. I think I already mentioned, we've already got the lecture slides. They're linked on the schedule. There are extra demos in all of those lecture slides. So in order to manipulate that information, to use it, I would recommend highly, if you're struggling with P8 in particular, go back to those lectures prior to P8. Go through and take a look at those extra demos. Actually, the demos I did in class, try and do them yourself. Walk through them. That will have that information in your brain. There are also worksheets. Uh, I pass out lots of worksheets and maybe do like one or two problems from the worksheet. Those other problems are take home. Do on your own, learn things. Um, I post all of the example code. So if you go ahead and try and reproduce the demos that I have done in class, you've got the answer right there. Uh, finally, there are readings posted uh, for many of the topics. Definitely check those out. And Google is a great source. The internet is awesome for finding additional information about any topic. Just go search for whatever topic it is. Before you do the, the projects, do the lab. Make sure you understand what's going on there. A lot of times there are hints and you can just directly copy the code. I, I think a lot of people, you know, at this point, they're at home. The strategy for getting through this class and probably a lot of classes is to just focus on getting these projects done. So they skip the lecture, they skip the lab, they skip the lab. Um, the worksheets, they go straight to the project and go, huh, I don't have a clue. Definitely take the time to learn the material. It makes the project go so much faster. And I've got watched the video lectures and then I changed it. I think 
The video lectures that I'm trying to produce are things that I want you guys to be able to follow along, open up Jupyter Notebook, and do this stuff with me. There, I tell you to pause. I tell you to go do stuff. You will learn things better if you do it. And some of the advantages of video lectures, there's no time limit. The bell is not going to ring. I love that. Uh, I apologize for people who hate long videos. But you also have the power to rewind and hear something again. Uh, if you didn't quite get it, you can go look up the words I used. And again, you can actually do the same thing I'm doing during class. All right, other places to get information, uh, the Who's My TA form, uh, still available on our website. We're still using that. Go figure out who your TA is. Send them an email if you need more help. Piazza, awesome place for information. Uh, definitely look through the old posts and see if someone else has already asked the same question. A lot of the questions I get, um, you know, if there's 20 problems on the homework, I get questions about every single one of them. Um, and on Piazza, there's answers about every single one of them. So, and then if you don't see what you want or you're having trouble, definitely ask your own question. Um, we're still having office hours for the TAs and the instructors. Shelf hours are still being manned and the lab hours are still being manned. So you can go to Blackboard Collaborate, log in and um, ask any question you want there. We'll pull you into breakout session. Um, I've been finding that it's it's been manageable during my office hours. Uh, I've been scheduling mine when there are other people available in case my internet goes out so that there will at least be someone there that I can text and they can explain where I am. And um, But there it hasn't been overwhelming since that first week. I think we've done a better job of manning things. And if you show up and you're the only one there, it's likely because the TA is actually working with someone else in a breakout session. So if the link is up, if you can get in, someone is there. Um, but you may not see them right away. So just be patient. And if it takes more than about 10 minutes, send me an email. Um, all right, uh, cool. All right, I want to spend a little bit of time now introducing databases. Um, so far, we've been spending a lot of time on Python code. And it's my hope that you guys take a lot away and can program Python for your other classes, for your future career. That'd be awesome. But there are going to be a set of you who use databases in your future career and your job. Um, in fact, these next three lectures about databases might be the most important thing you take away from this class. In fact, one of the students last year who took this course actually got a summer internship because she was able to know some things about uh, SQL queries and databases. So databases are just large um, data structures where we're going to hold information. Um, in comparison to a CSV file, we get one table and it's a simple table databases are going to have many tables with a lot of structure we're going to learn a couple things in this course uh, number one how to get data out of a table and we'll be using pandas for that we'll be looking at how to take large data tables with lots of information large databases and narrow them down to just one small table with the answer we want and then uh, in lecture two on databases databases two we're going to learn how to summarize the data so um, for example if i have just a a database with uh, how fast hurricanes go it doesn't actually have the average database I can't just or the average speed of a hurricane I can't just pull that out so we'll, we'll be learning how to summarize the data how to aggregate things and come up with uh, more advanced answers to questions okay there are some things that we're not going to get to in this lecture um, first uh, schema design that's uh, what tables do we put into a database what columns and how are those tables and columns related to each other? If I've got two tables with the same column, I should be able to connect those rows together. We're not going to look at data that change with time. Um, and things are updated. We're also not going to look at how to add a row or remove a row or change the data table in the database. Third, we're not going to look at concurrency. That would be two programs trying to change the data at the same time. If you can imagine two uh, programs trying to write to a CSV at the same time, you can get a jumble of things as one writes, and then the other writes, and the first writes, and the second writes, and just a mess. Um, databases deal with that with ease, no problem at all. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about performance, why a database might be a better choice than a CSV file. Um, and finally, one of the topics I would absolutely love to do would be uh, joined, that's merging tables together. I'd love to do this, but we're just not going to have time. Okay. Next up, all right, yeah, so take a second, go to our webpage. Today is Wednesday, April 15th. Uh, database 1 is the lecture. Right here is the code that I will be using uh, during the demo today that I would like you guys to follow along. So pause the video, 
go click here. We're going to be looking at the bus.db, our database file. There's a bunch of other files in here for the extra questions at the end of the lecture that I'm not going to do as demos that I would highly encourage you guys to go ahead and try it on your own. So go download that now and then come right back. So just for today, we're going to be taking a look at a couple things. We'll be looking at the how data is organized in a database. The, you know, there are more than one table. What's it look like? How do we extract columns? What are the types in, associated with that data? We'll be comparing them to JSON and CSV files. And then second part of this, we'll be looking at how to extract data from a database. So, and uh, the keywords there are going to be select, where, limit, sort by, from, and those are the what we're learning about. We're going to be using the SQLite 3 module. Don't worry, this comes with Python. It's already integrated and nothing to do there to go get a new module. And we'll be using Pandas as our way to extract all of that information from the database. Okay, uh, so let's talk about um, the comparison between CSV and database files. So on the left here, I have a CSV file. Note, it's one table and may or may not have a header. We've seen it both ways. It's easy to read, it's a text file. You can just open them up in any uh, text editor, take a look at them. Um, there are Python modules for um, importing CSV files and working with them. Uh, a SQL database may have many tables. And please notice that each table, for example, capital, is that, uh, capitals here has a title. Uh, populations has a title. Uh, CSV files don't necessarily have a title. You might have a file name, but that, that'd be it. In SQL, all of the tables are named, so we can tell it which table we want to look at. Uh, second, everything, all of those tables have column headers. Every column is named, so we can tell it which column we want. On a CSV, that's again optional. Some of them have it, some of them don't. We've seen both examples of both. All right, columns are always named. Second, wait, third, um, CSV files, everything is a string. And sometimes uh, that was a little challenging to work with. You had to convert the data, um, and there was no guarantee that you know the population here. Uh, it was, it's a string, but it could contain a number, it could contain words, it could be one million written out with letters. Um, everything is a string. And when we use pandas, pandas was pretty good about trying to figure out what the columns contained and converting it for us, but that wasn't perfect. For example, if you have a column like student IDs, they're 10 digit numbers, pandas might decide that we want that as a floating point number and display it to us in scientific notation. Uh, not necessarily the best thing. All right. In a SQL database, we can have uh, several different types. Uh, we can have integers, text, whatever, but um, all of the data in any particular column must be the same type. We have to tell it what type it's going to be before we put any data in, and we can't change it. We can't mix it up um, like you could with a CSV or JSON file. So uh, in this column right here, for example, uh, area of the state, this is a number, we are not allowed to put text here. And these types are strictly enforced. All right, now this slide, I've already talked about CSVs, they're all strings, databases, types are enforced. I just want to compare to JSON a little bit. So in a JSON, um, we can we have types. We can have, you know, value being a string, 10 is an integer, 3.14 is a float. But there are some issues here too. Check it out in line two. Uh, right here, I don't have an entry for a B or a C. They're different or they're missing and in the next row down i've got a is v2 that's a string b is 9 that's an integer but c is not a float like it is here it's now a boolean value so i don't even have to maintain the same type databases will not let me do that all right next i'd like to talk about why you might choose to use a debate a database over a csv or json file what are the advantages so first um you can imagine that multiple programs i've got program one and program two may want to share a data file. If they're reading from the file, it's no problem. Program one can read from it, program two can read from it, they can both have it open at the same time. Same deal with the database. However, the problem comes in when we want to write to the file. I think I mentioned this a moment ago, but if program one wants to write something at the same time program two is writing, we might get a little bit from program one, a little bit from program two, then a little bit from program one, etc., and we're gonna get garbage. Um, databases deal with this uh, seamlessly. It's no problem. They have a mechanism to keep track of who's writing and what to do. Okay, uh, next up, um, writing queries or asking questions 
about the data is much easier with the database. Uh, we can pretty much do anything in Python that we can do with the database, but to uh, write code for this is a lot more complicated. It's a lot of work to write code to figure out which actor appeared in the most movies. That was one of the problems from uh, the most recent problem set. Uh, and you guys did it. It was no problem. But answering those very same kinds of questions with the database is significantly easier. Uh, it's just one line. Uh, and we'll be, okay, so the, the key there is we're going to need to learn a new language, SQL, Structured Query Language, in order to formulate those questions in the right way so that the database actually provides us with a meaningful answer. Okay, and second, wait, fourth, ah, I was up late last night, fourth, performance. So I'm not going to talk a lot about performance, but databases a lot of times will be far superior to retrieving an, an answer compared to um, using Python to write code to go through. So uh, just as an example, a little game here. So I've got some data here and a table, and I haven't actually shown you the data. I've just got question marks here for right now. And I'm going to ask two questions. How many people are age 23 or younger? And then the second question is how many people scored 23 or less on the exam? Okay, so I'm going to get click to the next slide. What I'd like you guys to do, pause for a second, go get your cell phone. It's got a timer on it. I want you to answer the first question. How many people are age 23 or younger? Ready, set, go. Okay, excellent. Hopefully you guys actually took the time to do that with me. Um, jot that down somewhere. And now I'm going to ask the same question, but for column two. How many people scored 23 or less? Ready, set, go. So what I would expect that you guys would find, and it doesn't always work out this way, but is that the score column if you recognize that all of those numbers are already sorted, was much faster to um, figure out how many people scored 23 or less. The age column, um, everything was all mixed up, took longer. So the question is why? Um, the answer is pretty simple. To answer the question about age, you had to look at every single number. I had to check out the 26, the 22, blah, 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 22, 28, all the way down to the bottom in order to answer that question. When I recognized that the scores were sorted, I could stop as soon as I got to Hollis here. He's got a 23. Everyone else has a number bigger than 23. So it takes, uh, you know, uh, approximately one third the time to figure out the score after I recognize it's sorted. Okay, so databases have the advantage that they can actually keep multiple copies of the same data, some sorted in different ways. And this organization is called indexing. Uh, I wish we had time to go into that a little bit. For now, we're just going to take advantage of it and know that it's there behind the scenes. But for performance, databases do a lot of stuff on the inside that is just completely hidden from us. And the database will then choose which form it's keeping the data in to best answer the question as quickly as possible. Okay, those were some of the advantages of choosing a database, why we might want to use one. Um, now, let's talk about why we might not want to use a database. Why would we choose something simpler? Uh, databases are complicated and it's often overkill. If we only have a hundred items in our CSV table, um, both of them will perform blindingly fast, nanoseconds, and we can't tell the difference. Um, and for many situations, uh, JSON files, CSVs are simpler and just straight up easier to use. It depends on the kind of question we're asking and it depends on how big our data set is. Really large data sets we're going to want to take advantage of the performance from databases, but we may not need that extra complexity. All right, next up, I'd like to introduce you guys to some common SQL databases. All right, the first up, we have uh, Microsoft's SQL Server and Oracle. Both of these are products that you would buy. They're very expensive, full-featured, very powerful. The next two, MySQL and PostgreSQL, are both free. They're open source. Um, very popular also. And finally, SQLite is the one we'll be using in this course. Um, also full featured, very popular. Um, you know, the guy who wrote this actually regrets naming it SQLite. It makes it sound like it does, it's not complete, like it's missing features. It's not. 
The advantage of SQLite over all of these others is that it's, the license is very permissive. We can take the code for this, we can modify it, we can turn it into a product, and then we can sell it. It comes bundled with Python, and it's available many, many, many places. Uh, every Android device has it, iPhone has it, Macs have it, Windows 10, all the way down to Dropbox. It's available in billions of different products. It's easy to use and install. It straight up comes with Python. It's in the public domain. We can change it. Uh, billions of deployments. Okay. Next, take, let's take a look at the data set that we'll be using for today's examples. Now, this is the Madison bus data from their website. Madison actually keeps a lot of data available free to the public for us to use about anything that's not really private. In fact, they have a database for every single tree in Madison that they maintain. Anyway, this is a database that shows all the places where you can get on the bus, how many people get on the bus at each one of these stops, and um, the routes that they take. All right, let's take a look at the at the actual data. There's In our database, there's going to be two tables. The first one is the routes table. It shows um, all of the different route IDs, uh, the short route name, that's the one that actually appears on the sign, the URL for that bus, and then um, some extra information. The second table that we'll have is the one that actually has the daily boardings. So in this case, we've got uh, latitude and longitude of all of the stops, the actual stop ID, what route they belong to. Um, again, latitude and longitude. Um, and uh, this is the important part, how many people get on each stop uh, per day. And this is an average 1.03 people, you know, people come in your numbers, but it's averaged over 12 days. Um, so the next question that we want to ask is how can we get stuff out of this database? How can we answer meaningful questions? So uh, we're going to be using some new modules for this. Uh, quick review some of the modules we've used this semester so far. We've used math. We use collections. That's where we got named tuple from. JSON and CSV to load files. Sys was the uh, module where we were able to get argv to use command line operations. We talked about OS briefly. We used that for um, uh, the path and to find out if file exists, things like that. Copy is where we found uh, copy and deep copy. Record class was the uh, modifiable versions of tuples. We used requests when we were looking at HTML. Uh, beautiful soup coming up soon. <clears throat> uh, we talked about pandas, uh, tools for working with tabular data. And the new one today will be SQLite uh, 3. And this is going to allow us to directly access the SQL databases. It comes with Python and integrates with pandas. Okay, so three ways we can use that. Um, I have my table in my database here in red. I've got two tables in there. I can access these tables using the SQLite 3 tool directly. It comes available on a Mac. If you want it on Windows, you'll have to download it. Um, we can also use it directly with Python. So I've got uh, the Python SQLite 3 module here. It goes directly to our code. It also interfaces with pandas, so I can take my route table, use uh, SQLite 3 module to load it, import it into pandas. And that's going to give me a data frame. And I thought this would be a great way to review using pandas. It's very powerful. And I only want to teach one of these ways. Uh, you will learn the same amount about how to use uh, SQL databases, regardless of which method I choose. So this one just seemed like a good idea. OK, so the very first thing we're going to need to do when we start talking about this is import SQLite 3. So we'll just put the import light in. And then we're going to need to connect to a database file. This is the equivalent of reading a file with a CSV file or um, a JSON or any text file. We'll need to open the file for reading. And the command for that is SQLite3 connect. And this is going to return a connection object that we can use to extract the information from. And we'll need to give it the file name. If it's not in the directory, uh, make sure you use OS path join to uh, get the um, the path that's going to be system independent. Um, the other thing I'd like you guys to notice is if we were opening a file, we would have to put in the W to write for the file. We'd leave it out if we just wanted to read the file. Um, database, uh, SQLite 3 databases, and take care of that for us. It's just going to automatically determine whether the file exists. If it doesn't exist, it's going to create it. Um, if it does exist, it's going to create that connection to it, and it knows whether we want to read or write to it. It's not going to just wipe out the entire contents of our file if we accidentally include the W. Um, in fact, it won't let us put the W in. Okay. Um, yes, when we opened a file, uh, 
we would get a file object that we could read from, we could get data from. This is a very similar, we're going to get a connection object. It's pretty much the exact same thing for databases as we saw for files. And because we opened files, we also needed to close them. We'll need to do this exact same thing for connection objects. When we're done with it, we need to close it. All right, once we have a connection object, we want to be able to ask questions about the data. So in this case, we'll be using pandas. So PD is the common abbreviation for pandas. Uh, built into pandas, we have a read SQL um, function. This is going to take our query, the question we want to ask, where we're going to be selecting information, and which connection object. We need to give it a connection object because pandas assumes that we're going to have many databases open simultaneously. And I've got my bus.db file. This is the one I'll be accessing for my demos. There's some other files here, vocab.db, for example. Uh, the other examples at the end of the slides ask questions about this that would make great practice. Speaking of practice, you can see here I did practice my lecture, so hopefully this will go smoothly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new Python 3 notebook. We'll get that named main, and then I'm going to post a, put a copy in my uh, full screen text so that I can actually use the entire screen. All right, now to them. Um, <clears throat> And in order to get started, we're going to need a couple things. First up, we're going to need to import SQLite 3, and we'll be using pandas to access that as PD. Very good. Get those loaded. Things looking good. All right. So next up, um, we'll be uh, creating that connection object to the database. So that's con SQLite3.connect. And then I need to give it the name of that data file, the database. Uh, it's in the same directory, so I don't need to do anything fancy with join. Um, and we can take a look at this. Uh, it returns a connection object, um, tells me it's from SQLite 3, and it gives me the memory address where it's stored. Uh, just real quick, I did mention that if the data is not there, if the file is not there, for example, if I misspell my, everybody see the typo? If I misspell the name of my file, <clears throat> And then I try and run this. It will go ahead and it will recreate or create a brand new file. Let me see here. And go back over here. See, in my directory, I now have bus.db. Uh, I don't actually want that, so check this out. If I try and delete a file while I still have an existing connection object open to it, it won't let me do that. It gives me an error. So let me pop back over. <coughs> Close the object. Oops, typo. Run that. Now I believe it should let me pop back over here and delete this. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Let me pop back into Jupyter Notebook. I'm going to open this one more time. Let's take a look at what's inside this empty connection object, or empty database object. So before I close it, uh, the command to start looking at database, I'm going to pandas read sql <clears throat> then I need to ask a question and I need to tell it where to go look for the answer for that so that's going to be the general form of all of these statements for the rest of the lecture once I have a connection open um, the query here is a string so I've got that in string so let me just go ahead and make a copy of this and turn this one into a comment so that it's there for review and when you guys open the notebook after class and try and figure out what I was doing. Okay, I named my connection object con, so that'll be easy. Next up, the very first query, and this is just one that you guys should memorize. It will be select star. Star means I'm getting everything from SQLite master. So this will read everything from that connection object. And in this case, I have my broken connection right here. Um, because I, uh, it's not broken, it's just to a file that's empty, it just created a new file. Normally that would show me a list of all the tables. Uh, so let me actually go back, uh, we'll run that cell, and do it the right way. So first up, what I'd really want to do is assert that the path or the file actually exists and take care of all of those little trouble right from the beginning. I did an a lecture on error handling a few lectures back, so this is a great review. So what I'm going to be doing is the path to my file is actually pretty simple. Uh, Bus.db. Here, let me spell it incorrectly but different this time. 
so that I can show that the assertion actually works. So we'll give this a try now. I'm creating a new file, I'm going to assert that it exists. It doesn't. Oh, wait a second. I need to import OS. So check out the error message name. OS is not defined. Scroll back up to the top. It's good to put all of your imports at the very top. So added that, ran that cell again. Let's try this one more time. Okay, yes, now we have an assertion error. That file does not exist. All right, so let's put it back to the real one. Assert that it exists, and now I want to open that connection. I'm going to type every single line over and over again. I know that slows things down, but I believe if you guys are doing this, just building that muscle memory helps you remember better what needs to go in each of these lines. So I'm going to create that connection object and then print it out again. And again, I have a SQL connection at a different memory location. Okay, so next up, I want to do the same thing to just take a look at everything in there. I'm going to use my read SQL. I need that query here. There we go, from SQLite master. We can now run this, and then it's gonna tell me information about the database as a whole. SQL, I read SQL from Pandas. It's creating a Pandas data frame. So I hope this is recognizable from the Pandas lecture. It's got a number of things here. So the type here, the type column is telling me what type each of these objects are. The important ones are gonna be these tables. It also has some indexes that we'll be not be talking about. This is for performance, how things are sorted. Um, each of these gets a name. So the name of the table is boarding and the name of the route table is routes. Those are gonna be the important things where we look things up from. And then this part over here is the code that was used to create all of these tables and indices. So let's take a look at those in a little more depth. So let's see here. First up, I'm gonna just save this into a data frame so that I can access this table a little more easily. So we'll do that and we'll print it out. There it is, the second copy of the table. And then let's just take a look at that um, SQL column. So hopefully everyone remembers how to access uh, columns from a data frame. I can just do it like that. Um, actually, hold on one second. Let me uh, print out each of these lines independently so we can see everything without those dot, dot, dot. So to do that for something, I guess this is really the code that was used to create the data table or the database. So let's call this code in this sequence I would oops forgot my colon would like to print um, the code and see what that gives us all right excellent okay so this very first piece right here uh, is gonna tell us uh, that we're creating a table it's called boarding it's got these features the second thing we're creating an index uh, from the boarding table the third thing we have here is the second table Actually, I'm going to jump back over into PowerPoint and like highlight some of these things. Okay, so here we are looking at the code that was used to create uh, this database. And we have two tables here. See, we have two in red there, create table, create table. And here's the title of those tables. So we're creating table with um, one called boarding and one called routes. Uh, the next thing I'd like you guys to notice is that we have all of these column headers in... Um, the next thing, they're in quotes. So the boarding table is gonna have columns for index, stop ID, route, latitude, longitude, and daily boardings. And um, they're gonna exist within the parentheses here. And finally, we'll close that up with a semicolon. And next, uh, every single one of these columns has a type that the data must be. And this is strictly enforced. So the index column must be an integer. Stop ID and route, also integers. Lat and lon are going to be reals. Um, so please notice a couple things. Um, in Python, we would call an integer an int. And uh, the real numbers, we would call floating point numbers. Uh, um, every single programming language is going to use a slightly different variation to talk about numbers, to talk about types, the primitives that are available. And so these are just the ones that are used with SQL. All right. Next up, um, how do we actually get information out of a database? So this is the idea is that we're going to be narrowing down a large collection of data to just the piece that we want. So a database, for my example here, has three different tables. 
And if I want to access just table three and get some information out of that one, the keyword I'm gonna use is from. And that's gonna let me tell which table I wanna get the information from. Okay, the next thing I can do is select columns from that table. I don't need every piece of information there. I, I just might want the, the stop and the number of people to get on. I, don't, I might not care about the latitude and longitude of that stop. So this is gonna be a way that I can select columns. So select is the keyword when I get columns out. And then I can further narrow this down. Suppose I only want um, stops along Route 80. So I can go ahead and use uh, the keyword where to give it a, like a, it's like a test, an expression, Boolean expression that says keep these rows, dump the rest. And this is gonna create an even smaller table. I'm gonna get rid of all of these rows that don't match whatever my criteria are from the where function. Next up, um, and the next keyword is limit. I can say, well, uh, I don't need all the rows. I just want to look at a sample of it. You know, only show me the first three. That's what fits on the screen. Or perhaps I've sorted them and I want to find out who, you know, what actor made the most money. So I can sort them descending by um, <clears throat> salary. And then I can limit it to one. That'll give me the maximum. Um, so at this point, this is my selection. I've narrowed it down to a table that has these four cells by choosing a table, by choosing columns, and by choosing rows using these functions. <clears throat> okay, so the syntax uh, for uh, formulating an SQL query is very specific. These words must come in the right order. But please notice that case and spacing don't actually matter. So the keyword is gonna be select, this is the one that's gonna let me choose columns, from, and this is the one that's gonna let me choose the table. To be honest, I firmly believe this is backwards. I would much rather see from come first because I'm picking a table first, and then I wanna select columns, but that's not the order that the designers of uh, SQL chose. Um, this was a human decision, uh, and I don't think it was for the best. Other database querying languages out there do have this reversed, so, um, but this just is how it works in SQL. And then also notice that uh, SQL queries end in a semicolon. Um, if you're officially using uh, SQLite, you'll need to put that in. Pandas does it for us automatically. So to be honest, I'm pretty bad about remembering to add the semicolon. So Pandas takes care of it for me. It works and I don't even need to know that it's not present. Okay, so another thing we can do just to organize this a little better SQL doesn't care about extra spaces, just the words, and they can be uppercase, lowercase. So I can actually put my query and spread it out over multiple lines just to make it look good as I'm writing it, a little easier to read. So I'll be doing that in a second. <clears throat> and then finally, we've got select and from. Those are mandatory. I need to tell it what I want to get. Then there's a bunch of optional stuff that I could put in. All right, so rewind a second. Let me tell you a little bit more. From is going to require the name of a table. Uh, so, for example, if I want to know how many people are getting on the bus, I'm going to be selecting from the table boarding. And then I need to tell it which columns I want to get. So, star will get me every single column. It'll give me the whole table. So, here's the resulting data frame produced by Pandas uh, with index, stop ID, latitude, longitude, route, number of people that got on. Now, if I really only care about daily boardings, I can just put that in. If I want to know which route they belong to, I can just make a list of things that I care about, and it'll create a new data frame for me with these columns. All right, next up, how do we select particular rows? So select star gives me all of the columns in the table from the boarding table. So if I want to ask a specific question, I want to narrow down the number of rows, uh, the keyword there is where. And now this is going to look a lot like a Boolean expression. I need to say where route, and that's the name of a column, is equal to some condition, uh, less than, greater than. Um, in this case, uh, I'm selecting route 80. Uh, check this out. So an interesting thing about SQL is that they only use one equal sign for the equality test, that operator that decides if two things are the same. Um, <clears throat> but note that in uh, Jupyter Notebook, I was playing around with this a little bit. The double equals does indeed work. I don't know if Pandas is correcting that for me or if the newest version of SQLite uh, also just accepts double equals, but I didn't have any trouble with that. So feel free to continue to use the equal sign <clears throat> like we would use in Python for this. Okay, 
Uh, next up, um, this is uh, the new one. Uh, I have the power to sort my data <coughs> to make it a little more useful. So the keyword to sort the data is order by, and then I need to give it the name of a column that I want to sort by. I've got two options. Uh, I can sort descending. This would mean the largest number is going to come first. Or I could uh, sort ascending. This is the default version. And the keyword to force it to be ascending is ASC. And finally, uh, to limit the number of uh, rows that this is going to show me, uh, is a keyword is just limit. And then I need to follow that with a number to tell me how many rows I want to get. And it's only going to show me the top, uh, well, three in this case rows, or the top end if I put in uh, a different number. All right, so those are the three optional keywords that I can add. Uh, they're in red where, order by, and limit. And please notice that they must come in this order. In fact, select from where, order by, and limit must come in that order. The order is very specific. But I can use any combination. If I don't need to know, if I don't need to limit the rows, I can leave off the where, route equals 80, and still just order by the stop, and then chop it down to a limit of three. Uh, I can put any combination I want in. All right, just a quick review. I have opened a connection to the database, my bus.database, um, and then I took a look at the overall summary of the everything in the database, giving me the table names and some information about how they're created. That's going to tell me what columns are present. Uh, and that's just this uh, select from select star from SQLite master. Just, just memorize that one. Okay, and then I, I messed around a little bit and looked at what tables are present. So now suppose I want to actually dive a little deeper and get some data out of this. For that, I'm going to use pandas, and there's a read SQL function that's going to take my query string and uh, where I want to get the data from. So in order, I'm required to put in select, and I need to give it something. In this case, I want to look at all the rows, and I'm going to look at the routes table. So let's take a look at this. So this is pulling up that table. I see that I've got um, IDs, route IDs, uh, the short name, this is the one on the sign, uh, URL for that bus, some other information. Okay, um, this is kind of a lot of information, so I could, oh, hold on a second. This is actually a pandas data frame, so I can use pandas functions for data frames like head to limit the number of entries to, so it you know now it's nice and fits and doesn't have a thousand entries in it um, the other thing I can do um, actually wait before I move on let's take a look at the other data table so I want to that one was called boarding I believe boarding the G from the connection object let's see if I got that right yeah so this table is going to have the stop IDs, what route they belong to, latitude, longitude, and how many people got on the bus at those stops. So next up, uh, I want to talk a little bit about how to ask questions. Uh, for example, how many people get on the bus? Uh, let me shorten this up. So the other way I can shorten up how much is here, uh, let's just limit it to five rows. Oops. There we go. Okay. So now it fits on the screen. It's nice. Uh, two ways to do that. All right, so what I'd like to do is ask the question, how many people get on a bus every day in Madison? <clears throat> so for that, I'm gonna need uh, a couple things. So first up, let's go ahead and just get all of the, num the, the daily boardings for every stop. And we'll just add those up to figure out how many people get on a bus. So to do that, we will select, and I want the daily boardings column. Daily boardings. And then I want uh, this table, the boarding table. And then I need to tell it's uh, from this connection object. Let's take a look at that. Okay. Um, in fact, one more little detail right here. Let's do, so I told you a moment ago that I can take my query and divide it up over many lines. To do that in Python, I need to use the triple quotes there. So there. Now I can keep these uh, query items a little bit separate. They've got to go in this order. So from is going to tell me which table. Select will give me the columns. And then I can just put in my string, which is stored in the variable query. There we go. Okay, so this is giving me back a pandas data frame. So for the next thing that I'd like to do is actually be able to add up those numbers. 
So if you remember, I can take a pandas data frame and turn it into a series by selecting just one column. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and let's see, what should we call this? We're getting a series. Yeah, we'll call it bus riders equals. So uh, this part is going to give us a data frame. In fact, let's do it this way. Uh, we'll call it data frame equals that. Then we'll be extracting the column with quotes. Whoops, oh dear, typo. Daily boardings. Let's take a look at this. Yep, there we go. So now it's a series. And now I can call sum on that series and figure out how many people ride the bus every day in Madison. Um, 55,000? All right, hold on a second. I just wanted to see if that actually made sense. So I pulled up the population of Madison and did a quick search, found out the population of Madison is almost a quarter million people. So 55,000 would be about, what, 20% of that? Uh, I think that sounds reasonable. It's probably a lot less than that now that we are experiencing a global pandemic and everyone is quarantined. But, all right, so next up, Hold on, switch back over here. So I think that number makes sense. All right, uh, let's um, ask a different question now. Let's say that we are headed west, and I wanna know which bus should I take to go as far west as possible. Uh, just as a side note, this is the smallest longitude question. Okay, so I'm gonna create a new query and I'm gonna use triple quotes so I can keep this organized. I'm gonna need a select, I'm gonna need from, those are mandatory. And then at the end of the day, I'll be calling pandas to read SQL. I'm gonna ask it my query and from connection. Okay, so what are some of these things that I wanna do? I wanna select, well, let's take a look at everything from boarding. All right, so that's going to give me everything. Oh, the column I want to take is actually longitude. So let's um, order by longitude. So then that's LON. Let's do that. So the default is ascending, and I want the smallest one anyway. I'm going to throw this in to remind ourselves that I can sort by descending or ascending. And then I want um, which bus I should take, which one. And when I say which one, I'm actually going to limit it to one row. And this is going to tell me that I want to take uh, Route 55 going west to get as far west as possible. It's going to have these uh, latitude and longitude coordinates. And again, hold on one second. Let's go look up where this is. All right, so I copied those. I jumped over into Google Maps and pasted them into the search box. And that should show us exactly where the westernmost route stop is, right there. Um, ah, epic. That makes a lot of sense. All right. So it's definitely in Madison. Uh, looks like this is working also. It's on the west side. So let me pop back over here. And oh, 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 hold on. This is the end of the lecture. But I do not believe I closed my connection. So I'm going to just wrap up closing my connection. I probably should have written that line second right immediately after opening the connection. All right, if you guys have any questions, post them on Piazza. Everybody stay safe and have a great day.